Just want to chat a little bit regarding your Khalun fishing. I just thought I'd put a, a couple of um, little tips and little things together to explain the way that I go about my personal Khalun fishing. First of all, I'd like to say that with the modern age that we're in today, with social media and everybody talking about everything on the internet and so on. Everything gets very complicated. And simple is better, the usual old term, simple is better, is very true when it comes to fishing. If I look at myself and how it was long ago, my cousin and I, we used to go to Camps Bay, we used to in Odakral, Camps Bay, Buckhoven, Glen Beach, all those areas. We used to catch all kinds of species of fish. And we had a simple line, a hook, a bit of bait, sinker. And we were very successful. We got everything that we wanted to catch. We never had all these fancy things that they've got today. Of You've got to have a leader and you've got to have the bait and you've got to have this thing that floats that high and you've got to have a little shiny thing on your line and most of the time, it's because people make life very complicated. And because life becomes complicated, things get more expensive. We're taking Khalyun fishing as a, as, a, as a perfect example. You read on the internet, everybody's got different opinions about how long your leader, you've got to have a special leader and a special this type of line and that type of line. And you've got to have it. You've got to have a little shiny thing that floats and, and the, or a colorful thing that floats. Believe me, simple is better. Long ago, my cousin and I used to go to Cannibal Bay, Camps Bay, it's called Tidal Beach. We used to bait up, find a hole, throw in, catch Khalyun, no problem. Wherever it was, wherever we went, we used to have success. We used to catch him. We had the, the most simplest of equipment we used to use. Pen 500 Jigmaster reel, there they are, and we used to have a 10 foot rod, we used to have a 3 ounce sinker, and we used to catch lots of fish, no problem, Not, nothing was complicated, and that's one of the reasons today is because people make things so complicated, and it becomes much more expensive, and it's just generally more complicated. It doesn't have to be like that. Your best weather and your best conditions with experience for Khalyun is very simple. High tide, work back one hour before high tide. So let's say it's high tide at 10 o'clock. You work back one hour, so it's nine o'clock, ten o'clock high tide, plus about an hour and a half, two hours max. So that's your time frame. That's your ultimate fishing time for Khalyun. The time of the day would be early morning, as it gets light from, let's say it gets light at six and high tides at seven. That's perfect, that's exactly what you need. So it gets light at about six, Quarter past six, high tides at seven o'clock, you've got till half past eight, quarter to nine to fish. Beautiful time frame, early in the morning and then late afternoon. Experience has told me, has taught me, more catch, you catch more fish early in the morning than what you catch in the afternoon. That's it. So you've got your time frame, early in the morning, just before high tide, on your high tide, plus about an hour and a half, two hours max after high tide. The conditions of your water is another very, very important aspect of your Khalyun fishing. Your, the color of your water is very important. It's got to have a lot of oxygen. So therefore, you've got to find the time when the water is a ginger beer kind of color. It's got to be mushy, ginger beer coloration to the water. It mustn't be crystal clear. 
It must be a ginger beer color and it's got to be active and it's got to create a lot of oxygen in the water and the more oxygen it creates, the better the fish will respond. They'll come closer, they'll try and eat the mussels and stuff off the rocks. And another very important thing is when it's high tide, the fish come close. You don't have to cast far. I go to the beach often and I see the guys, they're trying to cast from, um, let's say, Bloberg Beach. They're trying to cast right to Robben Island. It's not necessary. You cast close. Most of the fish that I've caught, I've caught them right in front, 20 meters, 25 meters from the shore in a hole. That is it. You don't need to cast far. Another very important aspect when it comes to your Halloween fishing is to find holes. You cannot just go down onto the beach at high tide where you've never been before. You see the, the waves are coming over here, bait up, throw in and expect to catch a fish. The chances of you going to get something is zero or very little. You've got to go there, especially, with, let's say you're going to a place you've never been before. You go there on low tide when it's at its lowest. You go there and you look for gullies where there are lots of mussels, um, coral, coral worm mussels on the, on, the, on the rocks. You look for like channels between there where the, the fish can come in at high tide and eat off the rocks. You find holes, big pools in other words, where it looks nice and inviting where the fish can come in through a channel into a hole and he's got this whole area where you can eat the mussels and things off the rocks. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for holes to throw right into. There are a few places where I fish, where I go, I stand on top of a rock. I throw no more than 25 meters into a hole and I catch Khalyun right there. And that is Bloberg, Melkbos, those areas. And then the guys are standing further along the beach. They're standing in the open there on the beach and they cast in and they cast the home when they get nothing. So you've got to find where the Khalyun come in to feed. You've got to find those holes and you've got to make sure you can identify places where the Khalyun will come in to eat. That is key. So your key is ginger beer water. It's got to be a northwesterly wind that has been blowing, if possible. Rain, let's, say, let's, let's just say it's been rain wind blowing. It's got to be ginger beer color water. And you've got to find your holes. You don't cast too far. And you've got to take a lot of, pay a lot of attention to how you set up your bait on your hook. That is very, very important. The best way for you to set up your bait on a hook is to make it very difficult for a Khalyun to strip your bait. The best bait is red bait and that is finished period. There's nothing better than red bait. You can take red bait for Khalyun anywhere along the coast and you can throw it in and you'll catch a, you'll catch a, red, uh, you'll catch a Khalyun on red bait and that is it. It's your go-to bait. You don't need to use anything else. So you take your hook, normal Khalyun size hook, Not too big, not too small. A circle hook is the best. It comes in on the point, and he's got to work very, very carefully to get that fish, that um, bait off that hook there. And what you do is you, you divide your bait into four pieces. You've got to divide your bait into four pieces. You cut four little cubes, and you thread your first piece of bait on the top where your eye is. So your, your bait sits just above the eye, down just below the eye, that much. You put a little bit of red bait on there and you tie it on there with normal cotton that you sew with. You do not use elasticized cotton there. Then the next piece, you go further down the hook to the bend and you attach another piece from there to there. Your next piece, and there you use elasticized cotton. The following piece is to where 
the barb is on the hook and you attach the third piece over there. Then you use your normal sewing cotton. Your fourth piece is the entire hook that you cover and you just tie the top of it over there so the rest is loose. And therefore, when the Khalyun comes along, he's got to work very carefully to strip that hook. The first time the Khalyun will hit your line, the first wop 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 on your hook, on your line, when you feel him take, he will strip that top piece gone. It will be gone. He'll have three pieces remaining. The first piece he takes off easily because it's just tied on the top. He comes back, he eats quickly because he doesn't want the other fish to come and get to that bait before it's finished. So he'll come back quickly and he'll hit you again. Wop wop wop. On the third time, on the third part, of your hook. You'll strip that first, that third part, you'll strip it down, but you'll find it very difficult because you've tied it on with normal sewing cotton. Sewing cotton is very more diff it's more difficult to strip it off than elasticized cotton. You have to work very carefully to not hook himself on that. Then the second part when he gets nearer the top, he gets your elasticized cotton. If you haven't caught him by then, He's only got the top part which he's going to suckle again to get it off because it's with normal sewing cotton. So you've got three hits four times before your bait is gone with the setup. If you only had one piece of bait, he's going to hit you three times and your bait's gone. So you put four pieces of bait on there, four individual times that you've tied it with elasticized cotton and normal cotton makes it more difficult for him to strip. He's got to work very carefully. And then when, when you feel that Khalyun has taken your line, you can, uh, Khalyun has got a very, um, the, the, the way that he attacks your line, you'll know it's a Khalyun. He hits you hard, whack, whack, whack. And you'll know it's a Khalyun that's taking your line. It's not a clipfish or anything, it's not a hottentot. It's a Khalyun, that whack, 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 hard. Don't strike. That's a big mistake that a lot of guys do, they, they strike. You must never strike your rod when a Khalyun takes your line. Keep your line taut in the water at all times. And then when you feel that whack, 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 your line will be taut, the Khalyun will hook himself. When you feel the Khalyun is on your line, you can gently move your rod back backwards to set the hook better, but don't strike, never strike when you're catching a Khalyun. Another very, very important aspect with your Khalyun fishing is how you prepare the trace on your, your line when you're fishing with the rod. It's very important. Let's say, for instance, you've got a 15 kilogram line on your reel. Let's say on your reel you've got 15 kilograms. Let's just say. When you tie your sinker and your hook and your swivel to that line on your reel, the reel line, never ever use the same line that is on the reel to do all the very other things. Because what's going to happen is if you get stuck in you know, between a rock or seaweed, and you feel that you, you fuss, and now you've got to break it off. You walk backwards, and you pull, and you pull, and you pull, and eventually the line snaps. You're either going to get overwind on your reel, you're going to snap the line, it's going to, it's going to cause a lot of problems for you, because you're going, to, you're going to lose a lot of your line. It's Maybe it will snap by your, where the reel starts, it may snap in the water. You're going to lose line. And, because you're pulling hard, you're going to damage that line on the reel. So the next time you catch a fish, you may, you may snap the line. Never use the same line that's on the reel to create your trace setup. Never do that. So you use a swivel. At the end of this line, you use a swivel. It's just a normal two-way swivel. You don't need a three-way swivel. Just use a normal two-way swivel and attach, call it a nine kilogram line onto the one end of the swivel for your hook and onto the other end of the swivel attach your line 
for your sinker. No, don't attach the line on the swivel. In other words, let's say your swivel, one part of the swivel ring is here and the other one is there. Never attach the line that goes to your hook and your sinker on the same side. Because what will happen is if you attach your real line over here and you get stuck and you pull back, you lose everything. Everything will snap off. It'll snap and you'll lose your hook and your sinker. Then if you had a fish on, you'll lose the fish. Because the, let's say, for instance, the rock is holding your sinker and there's a fish on. And you pull, you'll snap it at the, the line and the fish will remain in the water stuck with your sinker. So you don't want to do that. You must make sure that you take your swivel, the line to the swivel, to your rod, and that is the one where you attach your sinker line to. The other side of the swivel is where you attach your hook to. So only one side of the swivel goes to a hook. The other side of the swivel goes to your sinker and to your main line. So if your fish is in the water and it's on the line and your sinker is stuck in the rocks and you pull, you'll snap the sinker off but your main line will still be attached to your swivel and to the fish. So you won't lose the fish. Let's say, that, for instance, as you're reeling a fish in, the sinker gets stuck in some seaweed or a rock, and now you're going to lose the fish because the fish is stuck on one side and the, and the swivel's in the rocks. So the swivel, the, the, if the sinker snaps off, your main line is still attached to the fish, and you can bring the fish in and leave the, the sinker out there between the rocks. So that's how you do your setup. And then if you're fishing rockery areas where there's lots of rocks and every time you throw in your, your line gets pulled over the rocks, always every say 10 casts, check the line from your swivel to your sinker to see it's not damaged. Because if you cast and you cast and you cast and you haven't checked it and you do cast hard and the sinker comes off your line, you're going to get an overwind on your reel. And that's going to cost you time, and it may even cost you your whole fishing day, because your line will get all entangled and you'll get a bird's nest. So it's important that you never ever cast, 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 and never check your sinker line, because if, you're, if that is frayed and you cast, it'll snap off, and it'll create a bird's nest, and it'll cause you a lot of problems, because you won't be able to fish anymore. You're going to have to either get a new spool, new reel, more line, and that's going to cost you time. Another thing is, if you're fishing and you catch a chalun, don't stop. Take pictures, talk, whatever. Take the fish off and cast straight back into the water because sometimes there's a few of them together. If you're taking time, by the time you've taken your photographs and then you cast in, the chances are the other fish are already gone. So the moment you catch a fish, throw your line straight back in. Very important, don't waste time. When you go to a place and you fish in a hole, try and get 8 spots, because you can fish 8 spots, 15 minutes each. By then your high tide to your, 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 your new high tide, for your, plus your 2 hours, will be over. So you can, you can easily cover 8 holes. So, you know, don't, but don't make life complicated for your fishing. Long ago, as I say, we used to catch fish. It wasn't like today. You didn't, we didn't have special leaders and special lines and floating little colorful things and get all complicated. We went with our rucksacks, on our bicycles, on our, with our 10-foot rod, with our jig masters, three-ounce sinker, casting, catch fish, no problem. We didn't have any complications, nothing. It was, life was simple. But it's because people make life complicated, and that's why things become expensive. It's not necessary. You know, you're going out there, you want to enjoy yourself, and you want to have fun. So, don't make life complicated. Just keep to the basics, keep it simple, and you'll succeed.